morning, everyone. Uh, I will conduct my speech in English. Okay. So uh, I'm Joe Chai from Proxima X. Uh, I'm based in Malaysia, uh, but uh, generally Proxima X we have uh, officers in uh, nine countries. So today I would like to share with you uh, about innovative approaches in creating multi-level blockchain-based solution. So let us start with a bit of uh, internet revolution. Actually, blockchain is not something new. It is part of the internet revolution. And if you can see, internet started in 1969, when one computer node sent messages to another computer node. That's internet. And uh, in 1990s, 1990s, 89, and uh, World Wide Web become uh, popular. It, is, uh, it was invented by uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. And uh, now we have uh, blockchain in 2019. And the founder of World Wide Web, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, actually says that uh, Web 3.0 will be decentralized web. Reason being, uh, blockchains or decentralized web today is to help to address three major issues. First one would be information security. So I'm sure a lot of you here have experienced uh, uh, information you can read from the articles in the internet. Information are compromised every day. So just an example, uh, Facebook. Sp Facebook, if you have a Facebook account, uh, I'm sure m most of you have been hacked or even your bank's account. So even banks, financial institutions, they have problem of uh, information security. And of course, data privacy. Um, a lot of you might have uh, received calls from a lot of uh, uh, companies, pe people like uh, in the, from the banks or insurance, they try to call you and try to sell you the products. So these are all the, the, the data privacy uh, leakages. Okay? And last but not least, blockchain is here to solve uh, centralization and monopolism. So later on, I will tell you how blockchain will be able to uh, help to address, to address these three issues uh, faced by all of us today. Then, uh, Jan, now we go a bit further into the blockchain evolution. Uh, blockchain 1.0, which is a uh, Bitcoin, is mainly used for payments only. Uh, and when uh, Ethereum introduced smart contract, then there is this blockchain 2.0. And uh, blockchain 3.0 is NAM catapult where it introduces uh, cross-chain interoperability and uh, multi-purpose uh, smart contract and scalable. And what is expected? What is expected for the next generation blockchain from the industry? So from the previous slide, you can see blockchain started in 2008. And uh, we are 11 years from, from uh, 2008. And what do you think about blockchain adoption? I think blockchain adoption is still very minimum. And why is that? So I think we need to create a more user-friendly platform for companies to actually adopt blockchain into their organization. So from here, you can see um, blockchain is not perfect. Blockchain cannot be used to solve all the issues. So it's not everything you need blockchain. Blockchain. Uh, like I mentioned, the, the revolution of blockchain it is not scalable at start. And uh, it was slow. And uh, they have this uh, data size limitation. You can't store a whole huge file into a blockchain. So it is a ledger. It's a distributed ledger technology for you to store your transaction records only. And uh, in the traditional architecture, it is uh, centralized and lack of security because you have a single area of uh, attack from the outsider. So when you have a centralized architecture, uh, the hackers can they can launch a targeted attack to you, and uh, yeah, the the people hosting the server, be it like AWS or Google, they are actually monitoring all your data, okay, and uh, lack of transparency. So so in today's, I think we need an integrated and distributed ledger technology where we able to combine the best of both worlds together and offer it as a platform, as a solution to the industry at large. So 
you see, when we combine the features of uh, blockchain and uh, traditional architecture, we became, uh, it will provide more uh, bigger data size. Now, you will be able to store a PDF or even a video file into a decentralized uh, platform. Uh, of course, it will help to improve speed, immutability. So the major features of blockchain is about uh, immutable immutability. This is why um, big companies like Walmart, they work with uh, IBM to implement blockchain to keep track of their food supply chain because they know the data is uh, immutable and uh, uh, the supplier cannot simply change the data. So it is there and uh, everyone will rec recognize it as uh, genuine, the data. And it's encrypted. So no one except yourself will be able to accept uh, you'll be able to assess your, your data information. Imagine today, uh, if you are into cryptocurrency, your wallet is the only way for you to transfer uh, your cryptocurrency. So you need a private key in order to access your wallet and then uh, transfer. So we take the data, something like your cryptocurrency. So you need your private key in order to access those data and transfer those data. So this is uh, uh, what I refer it to an uh, integrated and distributed ledger technology. So we integrate multiple technologies together, multiple decentralized technologies together, uh, from the blockchain layer, streaming layer, the storage layer, the database layer, and the consensus protocol. So together, it will be a great platform for companies and organizations to adopt decentralized technology. So uh, blockchain itself doesn't work without the without the storage, without the database. So the storage and the database are still the major uh, component of an IT system. So we believe for a decentralized uh, platform to be widely adopted, we must combine all of this together. Okay, this is an example of how the decentralized uh, network works when uh, they, there isn't any single point of failure uh, from a centralized architecture. So uh, you can see the data, the storage, or whatever information are distributed across different nodes. So one thing good about a distributed storage is that when you upload a file, a file is shuttered into many pieces, and those piece of information are distributed across different nodes and each piece of that is actually encrypted. So for a user to access the data, you need to have the private key. So you can think of the uh, like current now they have two layers of technology. First would be uh, when one piece of information is shuttered and distributed to so many nodes, you need to hack all of these nodes in order to get the whole data. And secondly, each of these uh, nodes and the piece of information is encrypted. So security is already built into a decentralized uh, architecture. Compared to now, the, the, the companies that spend millions of millions of dollars to set up the network security, firewall, intrusion prevention system, database, firewall, NDDoS, whatever you call it, because they know there is a single area for attack. But when you implement this, you don't need very high-end network security because blockchain itself uh, or the decentralized architecture itself have incorporated the security from the beginning. So that is why it will help organization to reduce total cost of ownership. And to, to improve the adoption of a decentralized platform, we believe that uh, an API gateway should, the platform should be uh, API driven. So that all, for any application that is uh, being developed on existing languages, be it Java, TypeScript, Node.js, PHP, or Python, it should be easily, uh, easily integrated to the platform. So you don't need them to study a new languages and start all over again. And uh, uh, they spend six to 12 months to learn about the new languages or new technology. And after that, only they start the, the coding of the application. 
So when it is API driven, it will help them to reduce their development cycle. Okay. And also, I think um, one of the challenge faced by the blockchain industry at large now is that uh, a lot of people ask about interoperability. So um, now blockchains are still in the silo. Ethereum, Bitcoin, NAM, so Hyperledger, they, there is no uh, cross-chain interoperability. I think uh, moving forward, this is one of the steps that all the industry players or all the blockchain players will need to uh, play a role in terms of uh, interoperability. So, uh, like for example, currently, uh, People like Ethereum and Hyperledger and NAM, they are looking into, or I think they have started to uh, implement some some type of uh, uh, POC to integrate with other blockchain protocols. So in the future, when one blockchain uh, protocol will be able to communicate with another blockchain protocol, then it will actually widen widen the the adoption. As a customer, you you are so confused, right? Say today you are uh, IT IT system manager, okay, in a huge corporate. Uh, so today you want to know which the boss give an instruction. Uh, let's look into blockchain. But uh, as a start, you see, well, there are so many blockchains available in the market. Which one is the best one? And you maybe you probably you uh, started with uh, Ethereum, and few months down the road you think that oh maybe I need another one. Then what what is what about the effort you have put in to develop your your application or your your research, and uh, you can't integrate them with another blockchain protocol. Actually, I fa I I face this uh, issue myself. Uh, one of the uh, R and D, the government R and D arm in uh, Malaysia, uh, they started with uh, Hyperledger. Uh, being because Hyperledger is championed by IBM and uh, the government thinks that uh, uh, Hyperledger is more legit in terms of the branding, so they started with Hyperledger. And um, and now when they see uh, there are so many other blockchain protocols available in the market, but the problem is that they have developed some project in using Hyperledger. And uh, they started to see the implication uh, of uh, deploying a hyperledger into because uh, it might not suit all use cases. So, but they asked me, so if I uh, use another blockchain protocol, for example, let's say NAM, for example, I use it for my another project, but eventually how do they talk to each other one day? So this ministry might want to integrate with this ministry. They might want to in uh, communicate to each other and some form of uh, information sharing. How, how do that work? So this is one of the barrier I think faced by a lot of uh, organization where they want to uh, adopt blockchain. So moving forward, uh, I believe all the blockchain uh, player, blockchain protocol players will need to uh, look into interoperability in order uh, uh, to to promote the adoption. And yeah, this is what I meant by when you integrate different technologies together, the use cases are, li are limitless, so unlimited. So basically when you have uh, storage, when you have uh, streaming, when you have uh, database and blockchain, so it can be used to develop on any kind of uh, application, be it a KYC, business continuity, health, identity management, uh, big data, AI, registry, so all these application can be developed onto a integrated and uh, distributed ledger technologies uh, uh, easily. This is another uh, uh, another features that I would like to share with you is that um, we believe in an off-chain smart contract. Um, because when you do on-chain smart contract, uh, you know, blockchain is immutable. 
So once you have deployed it into the, the blockchain, you can't modify it or change it. So even though after that you discover that it's a bug, you can't, you can't do anything about it. So we believe in a, a off-chain smart contract, but then it, it, it comes back to the question that when it is off-chain smart contract, it is, uh, it is a centralized architecture. So uh, we believe that in the future, an off-chain smart contract should be distributed, uh, should be deployed distributedly. So meaning to say that you can have the smart contract in multiple executable nodes. So if some of your nodes here are compromised, it won't be able to change the smart contract as well. So this is what uh, we believe in uh, a decentralized smart contract, a decentralized smart contract, uh, and it is off-chain. So if you have any uh, programming bugs, you still able to modify it and change the coding. But it will still prevent you from being a hack because of uh, distributed executable nodes. So it, it carries the same uh, 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 features like a blockchain where you need to hack the majority of the node in order to modify the smart contract code. And when blockchain is started, we, we talk about uh, public zone. So I think moving forward in, in order for wider adoption by the government or industry, uh, now the industry is looking at permission zone, uh, which is comprises of a private and a DMZ zone. So those in the networking line will be familiar with the DMZ zone where uh, it is an internally hosted node, but uh, accessible from uh, the internet. Yeah. So uh, this this is all uh, I have today. Uh, once again, I am from uh, Proxima X. This is my contact. Uh, if any one of you want to uh, uh, reach out to me for some discussion, yeah, this is my uh, my Telegram and email. Thank you.